The Haley O Show. Every Friday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Only on bulls.co.za. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first edition of the Haley O Show. Thank you to Ian F., who took you through to 10 o'clock, and I will be taking you through to 12 o'clock. So I'm on every Friday, 10 to 12. In store for you today, I've got an ab fest for you. (laughs) We've got a lot of beef and brawn coming on the show this morning. First up between 10 and 11, we've got the Burski brothers, uh, two MMA fighters that will be clashing on the 1st of March. So we'll be chatting to them about the lifestyle that is MMA. Uh, From the fighters that I've spoken to before, it is an incredible disciplined lifestyle that you have to follow if you want to be one of the uh, one, want to be one of those MMA fighters. So we'll find out all about their world, all about their clash that's coming up on the 1st of March, and just find out, yeah, a little inside info of what it means to be um, a fighter in South Africa. Right, now I've certainly got some brawn in studio with me this morning. I've got the Bursky brothers, Gareth and David, and their manager, Grant. So thanks, guys, for joining me this morning. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Now, you guys have a clash coming up on the 1st of March at Carnival City, that's right. Yeah. And so I'm sure the training is getting pretty intense leading up to the clash. So thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules. I know you work and you train um, for coming to chat to us today. Um, there's some people that are crazed followers of MMA, and there's some people that still don't know a huge amount about the sport. So maybe, Grant, if I can just start with you, if you can just explain to any of our listeners that have never seen MMA before or heard of MMA before, how would you describe it in a nutshell, what these guys get up to? MMA is basically mixed martial arts. So it's a mixture of all the martial arts. It's cage fighting. It's the ultimate fighting it's two guys testing their brawn, their skills against each other. And, uh, yeah, it's the ultimate. There's submissions, there's knockouts. You've got to get down to uh, Carnival City and watch it. It's great. You know, I've, I can, I'll be honest, I've never been to an EFC fight, but I've spoken to a few girls who have, and most of them have gone along there kind of a little reluctant, thinking, oh, there's going to be so violent, it's going to be so brutal. And they've loved it. Like They've <laughs> absolutely loved it. And they've told me they're not going to miss another one. So it's clearly something that people are getting hooked on and people are really starting to appreciate. Gareth, maybe you can start telling us about this fight that's coming up for you on the first. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm fighting a guy called Abdul Hassan. He's okay. from Durban. It's probably the biggest fight I've had in my professional career so far. Um, we're coming up to the top four, top five in the featherweight division. So okay. whoever wins this fight is going to take another step closer to um, going for that title. So, yeah, it's a very big fight for me. And Abdul's a very good opponent, and I'm looking forward to it. Huh? Cool, cool. And, David, you now, you're in a different division to your brother, right? That's it. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a welterweight, so okay. I fight at 77 kilos. All right. And Gareth's a featherweight, so he fights at 66 kilos. Okay, all right. And how big is the is a category? I mean, what is, like, if you fighting at, what did you say, 70? 77, yeah. I mean, do you have to be within one or two kilograms of that or four or five no, kilograms? No, on the day, we weigh in the day before. Okay. So next week, Thursday, we'll weigh in. And we have to stand on that scale at 77. But the category runs from 71 to 77. So basically, your featherweights will go from a 61 to 66. Okay. And then the next division is lightweight. We'll go from a 66 to 71. Okay. And then welterweight, 71, 77. 77. And then so on it goes up to the middleweights, run from 77 to 84. Light right. heavyweights, 84 to 93. Heavyweights, 93. Plus. Oh, so yeah. there are quite a few categories yeah. that That's you can it, fall yeah. into. But you say yeah. next week you need to be at 77. Yeah, I need to be at 77 kilos next week. Yeah. 77.0. That's it. Eh? Or Shh. anything under that I can be. But uh, yeah, we try and get in at that weight so that I can be at... Uh, yeah, you can be as your, at, at optimum, your biggest you that know? you can be. That's it. Eh? Like uh, usually overseas with guys that cut weights and stuff like that. So, I mean... Me and Gareth do quite a big weight cut, you know. I mean, I started cutting weight at 95 kilos when I got back from holiday in December on the 1st of January. This year, you were at 95. That's it, eh? And this what morning, are you at now? This morning, I was 82. 
So, um, yeah, man. How many times a day do you weigh yourself? Much more than the average Yeah, girl. look, our girlfriends get pretty sick of it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually worse than girls checking our weights. My girlfriend gets sick of it, eh? But, uh, That's crazy. So, yeah. in a matter of three three months, you've got to get from 95 down to 70. Yeah, look, it was after December, you know, so yeah. we obviously sat back, yeah. you know. Well, not sat back, we still trained, but I mean, we still had our pizzas and had a good night's out. Oh, you know, that must be so good. <laughs> <laughs> we must food quite a bit now, eh? But um, I was, not long now, eh? I was at a lunch where I met Darren Daniels and Costa, yeah. and um, it was so funny, we were all having this lavish three-course <laughs> meal lunch, and it was just before their big fight, and Costa was taking the feta off his that's salad yeah, and it. scraping <laughs> the salad dressing off the lettuce leaves and i was like wow that's wow. torture <laughs> yeah that's pretty much where we are now at the moment so it's yeah it's just um what what, what our bodies really need for the training and um that's sure. about all eh? it's nothing extra nothing more so gareth take us through what what i mean <laughs> it might sound pernickety but take us through what you eat in a day i Go mean well, i know you're training hard as well look i mean i've also i started off on about 82 kilograms Okay. At the what the first of January, and now I've got to come down to sixty six kilograms. So Jeez. it's also quite a heavy like cut. Twenty kilograms, yeah. But I mean, um, right now at the moment we've got um, Rory Diesel who works out our diets for us. He's our one of our main trainers and our nutritionist. So in the mornings we'll wake up and we'll um, eat not a lot of carbs, about fifty grams of raw oats. Do you weigh it? Yeah, look, we have to reweigh everything, especially the um, the carbs now, because the more carbs you eat, the more water you retain, the more the heavier you're going to weigh all the time. So, okay, so 50 grams of. And then, I mean, um, it's a lot of protein, so we'll eat a lot of egg whites during the day, during the morning. We okay. eat six six eggs, one full egg with um, six egg whites. No and <laughs> sort of between lunch and breakfast, we'll have half an ever with some lemon juice or salt and pepper just to make it okay. a little bit more tasty. <laughs> And then for the lunches, it's um, basically some lean protein, okay. like either chicken, fish, tuna, or um, even some minute steaks, some very lean steaks. Okay. But I mean, also not um, not a crazy amount. It's about um, 200 grams. And sure, then, it's tiny. <laughs> and then we got like a lot of spinach, a lot of um, cucumber, a lot of green pepper, red okay. onion, stuff like that to make up a salad with some balsamic vinegar and some salt and pepper as well. <laughs> to, Give it a sure. taste. No croutons, better. No, 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 no. <laughs> Good stuff. And then, I mean, um, between between lunch and dinner, we'll have about 30 grams of almonds. Okay. To just give us a little bit of energy for the training session. <laughs> All 30 up. grams worth. Just 10 <laughs> almonds. <laughs> and then, I mean, um, we're eating a lot of good fats as well, like coconut oils and MCT oils and um, fish oils and stuff like that. Okay. And then, I mean, we're consuming now about eight, liter, eight liters of water a day. Sure. Just start okay. building up the water in our system. We do like a, you can call it a water load to get our bodies used to just cycling water out. So next week when we have to weigh in, we'll have sort of a lot of water in our systems that we can get rid of to actually make wow. the weight. So there's huge strategy in this. Yeah, there's, a big, huge, si- yeah, huge there's a big, big science to all of this uh, water cutting and weight cutting that goes wow. on. Yeah, so. And do you have like a dietitian that you work with or um, yeah. Yeah. have someone advising you? Yeah, that's Rory Diesel. Okay. Uh, so oh, he manages see. our weights and yeah. our nutrition and stuff. But I mean like what Gareth's talking about now is uh, that's more or less the last 10 days of our diet. Okay. During our camp, we're eating um, pretty good, you know, like a lot of food for the energy. So need, it's just know? it's just really strict ten days before ten days out. So and yeah. before that, you but can look, just yeah. For us to cut uh, the amount of weight we do, we start our cut about nine ten weeks out. Okay, but that's when the fun stops. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, the fun stops, but um, I mean, like during the week, we still have our cheat meals. You know, we'll have a cheat meal like two or three times a week. Still eating like frozen yogurt stuff like that is that know. a cheap meal frozen <laughs> 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 yogurt like, dark, dark chocolate or something <laughs> yeah and like bananas and uh, peanut <laughs> butter and, and almond butter but all our food is just clean you know for nine weeks we don't like we stay away from the processed foods you know like the kfc's and sure yeah. no i mean that, i respect yeah. you guys hugely it's discipline that i could that nev- is, uh, never yeah. never never <laughs> fathom um just quickly before we go into another song david just quickly tell us about the opponent you'll be coming up yeah, against i'm i'm fighting tyron Wrightford, the rush he's from joburg south uh some call him the mouth <laughs> the mouth <laughs> He's got a big mouth there. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, his last fight was up against Darren Daniels, actually. Oh, but, and that he won? Uh, you know, Darren beat him. Oh. Uh, but that was actually for the number one contender spot for the middleweight title. 
So now he's actually dropped a division down to welterweight. Oh, okay. So yeah, I'm going to be introducing him into the welterweight division. Um, Ooh, okay. Yeah, he's a good fast opponent, a uh, good striker. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Eh? It's going to test me. It's going to test him. So. Okay, well, we'll up, play yeah. the the promo videos for these two fights that are coming up on the 1st of March, just after the song. And then I also want to speak to you, Grant, about how they decide in MMA or in EFC who fights who and how, how the ranking all works. We're back talking to the Bursky brothers and Grant, their manager. Um, I'm going to play you now uh, David's promo video for his upcoming clash on the 1st of March. Dropping down to welterweight, Whiteford will look to unleash his devastatingly fast hands and vicious kicks to dominate his opponent and make the division his own. After a bruising three-round loss to Francois Kabul, Kyrsky is dead set to prove why he is still a power player in the welterweight division. This is one of those fights that have been put together to please the crowd. Both these guys have incredible stand-up. I expect a barn burner in this bout. The Karate Specialist takes on the Muay Thai Pro, Tyron Reitford versus David Gursky. Right, so there you have it. That's what David's up against on the 1st of uh, March. Now, Grant, perhaps you can explain to me. I know there's one title match per evening, okay? And then the other fights that go on, how do they decide who fights who? So you have your, your main fights or your main card, which is your, your, uh, your fights that are live on TV. Yes. You have your undercard and then you have your middle card. Generally what happens is uh, on the undercard we've got a lot of new guys that are joining okay. um, and guys that have just started out in the EFC. Your middle card are the uh, more experienced guys. And obviously your main cards are the guys that are looking for title shots or the title, title holders themselves. Okay. Um, Graham, the matchmaker, he matches fights. Um, he tries to, obviously, he looks stylistically um, like David and Tyron. Is, is, is going to be a stand-up war. Uh, um, who it would suit them to who fight. Who it would suit. Okay. They also, they, they, they speak to the clubs a lot. They'll, they'll phone and tell you, uh, this is the opponent we're looking at. Um, you then discuss it and decide whether it's a good fight or not. So there's a lot of strategy that goes into where we're going with, with each fighter and how we're building them up and, and sure. where we want them to take. Uh, a lot of fighters out there will take any fight. Uh, a lot of fighters will select their fights. <laughs> okay. So it really depends on their, on their, on who's backing them and where they are and what's available. But, I mean, you talk about the strategy that goes into all of this. I heard um, this morning when I was doing some research that apparently MMA is so huge in the States that the viewership is bigger than the Super Bowl. Sure. I mean, that's how how huge the sport is getting and it seems to certainly be growing rapidly in South Africa. 100%. So fastest growing sport in the world. Really? Yeah. And okay. it's taken over. It's destroyed boxing in the States at the moment. It's destroyed most sports. In America, the Uf UFC is where you want to be. It's the fastest, it's the biggest sport events there. And, there and what are their audiences like there? I mean, you guys pack out, what, stadiums of 7,000 people? Yeah, they're looking at about fifteen to 20,000 people. They're in Vegas. Shock. They've just recently had one in the UK. Uh, Canada, they have uh, huge fights uh, and all the undercard fights, and there it's all pay per view. Uh, live on uh, their undercards, live on Facebook. So social media plays a big part in okay. uh, in the sport, and I think that's what drives it a lot as well. Is uh, guys are av available to their fans, which is uh, something that drives on social media. Yeah, edition. you can talk to a superstar or your hero in MMA on Twitter. You know, Brilliant. and uh, often we see guys saying i can't believe he's following me but it's uh that's, that's cool. how that's goes. what people want these days and david yeah. and gareth you guys are on twitter do you want to tell us what your handles are yeah i'm at just at gareth bursky yeah i'm just at bursky boy okay and that's b-u-i-r-s-k-i -I. Okay, boy, yeah. bursky boy. Okay, bursky boy, yeah. okay, cool. And Grant, I also wanted to ask you. You were saying when we were playing some music that ladies are huge followers of MMA, yes. and my friends can testify to that. I've had a few friends that, like I said, have have loved the experience of going to watch, and yeah, you see them in the crowds, hey. Ladies are the biggest spectators. They're the ones <laughs> that you hear screaming the loudest, shouting the, the loudest, using the worst language. <laughs> <laughs> they are the ones that are the super, sport, uh, the super supporters of, uh, of MMA. 
Sure. The guys bring them. I think half the guys just sit back and watch what their ladies do. But it's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> so we the spectator sport, not you. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's insane. You have to actually get down live to watch it. It's 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 an insane evening. It's uh, it's a fantastic production, and the guys just uh, they really put on a good show. So the, you, the spectacle of it is great. It's hey? massive. Yeah, it's huge. Sure it's awesome, yeah. it's on a par with anything in the world. I'm telling you now. It's the production itself is fantastic. You need to go and see it. It's great. Okay, okay. All right, I'm sold. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk now a bit about the training that goes into it. Uh, Grant, you say you own a gym, is that right? That's right, yeah. So now do, do the people that uh, train at your gym, do they form kind of a team as such that would fight against people from another gym? Yes. So at World of Warriors, we've got a, a pro fight team. We've got an amateur fight team. And then we've got a public uh, uh, public classes as well where people uh, can just come and train as fighters and that okay. so our amateurs and our pros train together and that's that's what the strength of the gym is is okay. when is going forward is is the sparring partners and the training partners that you can give each other so how do you prepare your fighter for the fight if you've got the right people in the place okay sure right training methods and things like that at, at, at wilder warriors we we've got a a lot of different coaches that we put in place for the guys so we work a lot of different different aspects and we've got rory diesel who does the nutrition um and a mastermind at, at putting game plans together and things like that so we okay. work it from quite a few angles uh with regards to preparing for a fight it's not just pitch up on the day and yeah you know, hit him in the face it's a professional yeah. sport now that 100%. you know you need full of you know, That's wholehearted insane. training. And you guys, do you do this full time? Is this a profession for you? How do you view it? No, uh, me and Gareth actually run our own uh, plumbing company as well. So you work together, you yeah. train together. That's it, so. Okay, but you don't fight each other, <laughs> hey? No, sometimes, sometimes at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> only in training. Okay, only in yeah, training. Yeah, that's it, eh? So, yeah. Uh, How do you split your time? It's quite hectic, yes, eh? Like, we're up every morning at half past four. Yo. And we're in the gyms doing uh, our cardio workouts. You know? Do you live together as well? No, no we don't live together. Okay, so you're up at Hoppers for doing cardio? Cardio, yeah. And then, uh, look, we start pretty early at work. So then we straight off to work from 7 to about Hoppers 3, 4. Okay. And then we're back in the gyms doing our technical training, whether it be wrestling, boxing, MMA, uh, for another three hours or so. Eh? So... Wow. We've got a pretty rushed, hectic day, our, our lives, you know. Um, so it's three hours of training, different styles, different kinds of training at the that's end in of the, the day. Often, yeah, that's in the After often. full, sometimes a 11, 12-hour work day. So. Yeah. so let's pan to your plumbing company. What's that called? That's GDM Plumbing. Okay. Yeah. We, uh, and what areas do you work in? Look, we're from um, Pretoria side. Okay. So we're basically out in Pretoria, but we do do a lot of work in Joburg as well. Okay. Yeah, so cool. Well, there you have it. Yeah, hey? cool. And uh, do you wear uh, vests when you do your plumbing work? No. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, I look. think you might get a lot more business if you did. <laughs> Just saying. No, look, you try to keep it professional. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway. You're selling yourself short. And tell me, so now you brothers that are that are fighting, how does your family feel about it? Um, do your parents or siblings, you've got another brother, that's right. Yeah, we've got... And he doesn't fight. No, he does. Look, we've got um, another brother named Matthew, and he okay. fights as well. Okay. He's still an amateur. He also trains with us. He's going to have about one more amateur fight, and then he's going to be a professional as well. Oh, she's... <gasps> but then, I mean, we've got two other older brothers as well, and we've got an older sister Five, as well. Huh? Six, six of, of you. <laughs> six yeah, of you. Big wow. family, yeah. And and your mom, I mean, as a mother, I'd get neurotic when my if my son played rugby, let alone <laughs> <laughs> let alone MMA. What does she say? Yeah, look, my mom, she's still trying to get used to it, but um, yeah, she's slowly but surely warming up to it. Huh? But yeah, she's <laughs> yep. not not the biggest. Does fan she come of us. and watch? No, she won't actually come and watch the fights, but um, now that we're on TV and she'll, um, she gets a lot of updates from the girlfriends <laughs> updating her and what's going on. Eh? So. Well, let's talk now about the safety of the sport. I mean, it's still in its infant stages, you'd maybe say, in South Africa. And I read on the EFC website that there is a whole list of rules involved. Would you say it's safe? Yeah, I mean... Um, Look, I think a lot of the safety comes in that you're able to handle yourself in that environment. Okay. Obviously, um, there's a sanctioning board in place that tests guys before they become a professional to make sure that they are capable of handling themselves in a 
professional fighting environment where so a mental a mental test well look there's a there's there is a there's a it's a physical test more okay. than anything to make sure that you're capable of um protecting yourself really you know what i mean they, they don't really test your skills they just really test that you're able to protect yourself in uh, in that environment and i mean um that's that's the biggest thing is that you're in a professional sport where two guys are trying to hurt each other to win the fight so sure. you've got to be able to i mean that's that's part of the reason why we train so hard is that we know we're going in there but at the end of the day we've prepared to the best of our ability to protect ourselves and to you know what i mean we obviously do you feel pain when you're in in the fight yeah. i mean or is your adrenaline rushing so <laughs> no, hard i feel a lot of pain yeah yeah you look feel? um the only pain you really feel is after the fight eh? like yes. there's, yeah. so, there's so much adrenaline running like i mean you can kick someone shin on shin you know and like it might sting a bit, but it's nothing that'll re- like really stop you, you know. Yeah. Or only thing that's really going to stop you is getting knocked really hard on the jaw and going down. Or the and groin. Waste. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it. Yeah. That's it. A groin <laughs> shot, but that's illegal, you know. Okay. So actually, if you get a groin shot, they give you five minutes to uh, recover. To catch your breath. That's yeah, it. That's that's it. it. Okay. Yeah, try and find them again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, man. Uh, so it's pain. You feel the pain afterwards. And have afterwards, you ever uh, sustained like a serious injury from the uh, fight? We've been very lucky. Eh? Um, I've had one or two cracked noses, but uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I've had no. I've had not not a single. Injury at all, eh? Yeah, really? I've been pretty fortunate. Yeah, so. That's weird. But they, yeah, they're Even quite, though you, that your sport is to try and get someone to submit, like that's, that's, to uh, beat them into submission. A, yeah, yeah, that's part of a sport. Like, I mean, cuts and stuff like that are pretty um, normal, you know. But I mean, uh, yeah, it's a sort of part of our sport we do. You know, there are a couple of broken arms and stuff. Um, okay, from but nothing. submissions, you know. But I mean, that can all be prevented as well. Some guys don't like to tap out when they're in a submission. And yeah. It'll lead to your elbow being over talked or broken or a knee or ankle or yeah. something and like that, you know. How often can you fight a year? So you've got a fight now in March. When would you be able to fight next? Well we basically we basically take eight to nine weeks to prepare for a fight. So Okay, you know eight I mean? to nine weeks. After these fights we'd like to take a a week or so off from my to have some pizza and McDonald's yeah. <laughs> and sort of live a normal life with um sure. without having to rush through every single day like we have been for the last two months but yeah we'd take about a week and a half off from the MMA gym look we'd still keep active and still keep fit I mean that's our lifestyle now but sort of maybe um if it's March now April May and June again if we could have another fight it would be all right huh? okay so yeah cool. probably like three to four fights a year okay. if you don't get injured and everything goes yeah. well so you make a living from your plumbing company, um, yeah. but then you also is is MMA something you you know you do for financial reasons? Yeah, look, I mean, um, we we don't need the money we get from MMA because we have our plumbing business that we run on a daily basis. Sure. But um, MMA con- contributes to our finance situation, I suppose. But I mean, we don't need that money. It's for us. It's for the love at the moment. Bonus, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, so a, yeah it's a nice bonus. It's a nice bonus to get yeah. it. started out doing it for the love of the sport. So. Awesome. And I guess it isn't something you can do for the rest of your life, so it's great to have the business yeah, to fall it. back so, on. Yeah, that's, that's why we think, you know, like, a lot of full-time fighters, mm-hmm. um, I mean, most of them land up uh, opening gyms or trying to start clothing companies and stuff like that, you know. Mm-hmm. We, um, we know that you've got a certain lifespan on fighting, you know, and we yeah. need something to fall back on. Cool. So, well, yeah. let's go into another song now. But I want to ask you about the shorts. You mentioned your mentioned clothing. Uh-huh. I want to ask you about how you design those shorts, and I also want to ask you, Grant, about uh, doping in in MMA, how it's controlled and and what's all involved. Um, all right, we're talking to the Bursky brothers, uh, two MMA fighters here in studio today on the Haley O Show. In studio with the Bursky brothers here ahead of their clash on the first of March. I'm quickly going to play you the promo video for Gareth's fight that's coming up. At EFC Africa 18, two of the top featherweights will go to war. Abdul Hassan squares off against Gareth Yurski. After a dominant performance over Hexagon veteran Leo Gloss, Hassan will be looking for another victory to propel him up the featherweight ranks. With a spectacular knockout of the night against Marcus Talyard, 
Yurski once again showed why he is considered one of the top featherweight prospects on the continent. Abdul Hassan has a great ground game, a very, very high level of jiu-jitsu. Gareth Burski has got a gas tank, and for a featherweight, he's got dynamite in that right hand. This is a classic striker versus grappler matchup. It's going to be good to see which of the two guys have added the other elements to their game to really come out on top. Durban takes on Joe Burr. Abdul Hassan versus Gareth Burski. EFC Africa 18, 1 March, Carnival City. Ticket and broadcast information at efcafrica.com. Okay, we in studio with Bers the Bersky brothers and their manager, Grant. And Grant, I wanted to ask you, I mean, obviously doping is at the forefront of all sports talk at the moment. Um, how is that controlled in a sport like MMA where obviously doping would, play a, would give you a huge advantage? Uh, they, do, they do random tests on the, on, the, on the night with all the guys that are fighting and they, they do... Uh uh, they follow drug-free uh, South Africa, so we do a lot of uh, t tests um, for steroids and things like that. Um, I think in the pro in the pro scene, it's difficult to do it, um, although there are rumours. But uh, in the amateur, it's difficult to do it because of these tests. Because of the on tests the and that, yeah. In the amateur scene, I think that's where um, the sport needs to get more controlled. You know, you. Uh, uh, you see a lot more of uh, uh, doping and things like that in the amateur scene. So, okay. yeah. if I could, if I could say that's where they need to address it, that's where they need to address it. I think in the pro scene, the guys test it on the night. They do random drug tests, and uh, so far they've been clean. Okay, well that's good to good to hear. Hopefully that can you know stay that way so that yeah. it doesn't get a tainted tainted image like other sports have. Hey. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, now, guys, I wanted to ask you, so um, you've got your plumbing business, you've got your fighting. If you have spare time, or when you have spare time, what do you, what do, you do? I hope you went big in December. I hope yeah. you went really big <laughs> in December. Yeah, we did go pretty big in December. It's like our only time of the year that we really let loose, you know. Cool. Otherwise, in between fights, we just let loose for like two weeks or so, you know. Okay. Um, but like now, training for these fights... Um, yeah, look, I hear it from my girlfriend every night. Oh, so you've got a girlfriend. That was my next question. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've got a girlfriend. Um, but yeah, she's awesome. Eh? She supports me. Like, mm. she'll cook all my supper and lunches and stuff and like that. And weigh your know? 50 grams of oats <laughs> and 50 <laughs> grams yeah. of almonds. She, like, she saves me so much time, time, that rest time that I need, you know. So awesome to have someone like her in my life that actually wow. supports me, you know, and... Uh, Still loves is she me athletic? Is she? Yeah, she's sport? athletic. Okay. Um, she was athletic when I met her. I think I've turned her into a bit more athletic person now. Gone a bit know? more extreme. But yeah, she is. Yeah, she's pretty extreme eh, at the moment. Um, Let me ask yeah. you. So now, overseas, there are females that do MMA. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, look, it's um, it's a violent sport, but at the end of the day, it's also like um, like I said, there's a lot more that goes into it. So you can also respect them that they're doing as much as they're doing to get in that cage and um yeah i mean i suppose you can't really discriminate that it's a woman doing it would you I mean, date a female mma fighter uh, i knew if her name was ronda <laughs> I suppose, yeah, look. <laughs> uh, grant yeah. do you have any uh female fighters at your gym we have ladies that train we don't have any fighters at okay. the moment but they funny, do it for fitness funny enough we have a lot a lot more demand for uh for for ladies to fight at the moment we uh we're looking for amateur ladies that want to are looking to fight. So it's coming. It's definitely coming. Yeah. <laughs> There's actually a movie out on the circuit now with Gina Carano, and she's a um, she fought in the, in Strike Force, one of the big promotions that um, is in America. So I mean, um, you know what I mean? And she's good looking, and she's just not. Um, you know what I mean? She's uh, not too masculine. She's not too masculine, and I mean, yeah, I mean, you can still she can't be, beat you. Yeah, you, <laughs> you can still be feminine, and and I suppose throw your hands around in a cage, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you reckon? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Gareth, I asked him what his um, if you wanted us to play any uh, if you wanted us to play any music for him, and he suggested his walkout song. So is this the the song they play like a top volume as you're yeah. walking into the ring? This will this will be playing as I start walking into the arena. Okay. And what is it called? It's a song called "Alive" by Kid Cudi. Okay. Here we go. 
Right, so that was Gareth's walkout song. It was a live by Kid Cuddy. And uh, Gareth, maybe you want to tell us why you chose that song. Uh, yeah, it's just, um, I like Kid Cuddy's music a lot. And I can just really, um, you know what I mean, relate to the song. And it really gets me pumped up. And it's a song when it comes on my iPod when I'm running. It makes me run faster and cool. gets the blood flowing. Eh? So, yeah, and you said you don't want to be associated with any kind of, like, gangster image or yeah i mean um look i think there's a big stigma around the sports uh, people that don't know it and don't know the athletes still relate the sport to gangsters and thugs and people walking around just fighting the whole time but i mean um like if you had to get to know us you know that we'll probably um run away from a fight if anyone had to cause a really? fight with us in the street i mean yeah there's no there's no use in trying to prove a point to someone when you know I mean, you're going to beat them anyway. No, look, I mean, <laughs> that's it. So we'll do our utmost to avoid a fight anywhere else. Eh? I, mean, no. um, I must it. say, from the guys that I've met that do what you guys do, I- I've been very surprised to see that you're all pretty chilled out, eh? Yeah, you're yeah. all, like, <laughs> just pretty, yeah, chill, chilled Normal guys. People, it yeah. doesn't, you're not like the ruffians or the thugs that people might associate with, yeah. with mixed martial arts. Um, and David, your walkout song, what's that? Um, it's the Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, The Adventures of Rain Dance Maggie. Okay, and is there any yeah. story behind that song? No, it's just more or less the same as Gareth, you know. I mean, it's you were talking about getting goosebumps when Gareth's song came on. That song gives me goosebumps, gets me pumped up, you know, and it's just good memories for me, and yeah, man, it's just... Cool. Well, yeah. here it is. Right, so hanging out with some serious brawn in studio this morning. We're with the MMA fighters, the Bursky brothers, Gareth and David. And let me tell you, they aren't <laughs> the aggressive guys you might see in the ring. Do you call it the ring? The cage. hexagon? The cage, okay. Um, they really are just chilled out guys that you want to hang out on the weekend with. So thank you so much for coming in uh, this morning, guys, and Thanks to Grant, to you as well. Yeah, um, maybe you can just tell our listeners quickly if they want to come watch these guys fight on the 1st of March how they go about it uh, just grab your tickets on CompuTicket um, get your tickets early though okay uh, because I think this one's the first one for the year it's a fantastic card there's going to be some huge knockouts so get your tickets early I think it's going to be sold out awesome and how much are we looking for tickets tickets start at 2.45 um, and they go right through to I think the VIP sections just over a thousand rand so yeah, cool. right through. You can get what you want. But there's no bad seats seat in that arena. Okay. Wherever you sit, you get to see the action. Awesome, awesome. And um, are there any sponsors involved that we can thank for all of this? Um, yeah, I'd uh, like to give a shout out to all of our sponsors that came on board for our fights. Uh, Soviet Clothing awesome. come on board. Now so they know. sponsor your shorts? No, the, look, shiny sh- the shiny <laughs> shorts that you wear? Yeah, no, look, uh, we've got another sponsor, Venom. Okay. Fight Clothing. They sponsor um, the shorts that we wear, and then everyone also put their branding on, on our shorts, shorts, as cool. well as our banners that sit behind us before the fights. You know? Okay. Yeah. So, and um, do you design your shorts? Uh, we pick our shorts. Oh, okay. Venom's got a whole range of different shorts. All right. So we pick what we like, and then all the advertising is thrown on that, you know, at a different okay. way. Eh? I think the yeah. shorts are also chosen to get the most exposure for the um, for the sponsors. So. Okay. Like I've gone for a very plain pair of shorts so that I can get a lot of um, a lot of this. You know, the sponsors will be very prominent on the shorts. Visible, yeah. Because sure. yeah. you know, how as girls watch, you know, we we choose to support the guy with like the best color shorts. Not <laughs> <laughs> the guy with the best six pack. Oh uh, uh, yeah, actually, when you're competing with six packs, I will go for that. Anyway, it's been great to hang out with you this morning, and guys, I wish you all the best of luck for the first of March. I'm going to try my best to come and watch. Good luck with the training and the dieting and enjoy <laughs> the right. celebrating afterwards. But can we just mention the rest of our sponsors? Oh, are there more? Mark, Absolutely. Uh, the guys go sorry. Uh, eight Limbs, they're also sponsoring us our shirts. Big shout out to them. RDB Consulting, Arcane MMA, like I said, Venom sponsors us. Air, Cl- Air Climber Air Conditioning sponsors us. Full Contact Nutrition, sure. giving us all of our supplements. Aquavita, Zash, giving us a lot of water and stuff like that. 
that we need to drink 10 liters yeah, a day. Yeah, your 10 liters <laughs> a day. And then Johan Gutschka, he's our dentist that doing all of our molding of our gum guards and stuff. Oh, as wow. Well. You must give him a lot of business. And <laughs> there. Just yeah. one more is um, Joff Kovaris from Pick and Pay. He gives us food every month and just helps us out a lot wow. with our nutrition yeah. and uh, getting us the right stuff to eat. Huh? So. Awesome. Well, awesome. do you know what? If I was a sponsor and I saw you guys and I heard about the dedication that you have and the attitude you have to the sport, I would definitely get on board. Thanks a lot. So Thanks great so. to meet you and hopefully cool. we'll chat to you soon. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thanks, Thanks very very much. Sure. Cheers. Cheers. The Haley O Show. Every Friday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Only on balls.co.za.